FISA requires probable cause that the target is an agent of a foreign government. Once FISA issues the warrant, then the government can listen to the conversation of the foreign agent. Example, if it turns out that the janitor in the Soviet embassy is really a spy who beats his wife, he cannot be prosecuted for domestic violence because the information was obtained from a FISA warrant, inconsistent with the Constitution, and he can't be prosecuted for espionage because the information was obtained from a FISA warrant, inconsistent with the Constitution. The only thing the government could do is deport him. In 1978, not satisfied with the lessening of the probable cause standard, the Congress enacted something called the Right to Financial Privacy Act. Well, you know what's coming. You know the way the government names these statutes. If it has the word privacy in it, bet the mortgage you're going to lose some privacy. The Right to Financial Privacy Act brought us full circle to the Writs of Assistance Act because this abominable statute permits government agents to write their own search warrants and to serve them on financial institutions. The target is limited to a financial institution, and the custodian of the financial institution must tell you about it. So if an FBI agent decides to write a self-written search warrant on the bank where Nick Gillespie deposits his billions, <laughs> the bank would be required to say, hey, Nick, there's a guy here. He's from the FBI. He gave us a self-written search warrant. We're going to comply with it in about 10 days. But you have 10 days to challenge it, to go to a judge and say, what is this nonsense about a self-written search warrant? I have my Fourth Amendment rights. That was the rule set down in the Right to Financial Privacy Act. But even the big government people who disrespected the Constitution, who hated the Fourth Amendment, who wrote the Right to Financial Privacy Act, understood that any evidence obtained from one of these self-written search warrants could not be used in a prosecution against the target in my hypothetical, the great and the wonderful, and the handsome and the devilish. You want me to keep going? Nick Gillespie. Because the evidence was obtained on less than probable cause of a crime, it was obtained inconsistent with the Fourth Amendment. All of this sets the table for 9-11. Now, wherever you were on 9-11, you, you cannot forget or underestimate or overstate the catastrophe that occurred to the 3,000 human beings that died, to the American psyche, to our feeling that we are free and will always be free and no one can take our freedom away, to the government and to the Constitution. Because the government's initial reaction was to author the most abominable piece of legislation since the Alien and Sedition Acts with the most unlikely of names, the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act is the most dastardly direct assault on human liberty and on guaranteed rights in the Constitution that the Congress ever enacted since the Alien and Sedition Acts 200 years earlier. The Patriot Act The Patriot Act was enacted with no debate on the floor of the House of Representatives. Ask your member of Congress how much time he or she spent reading the Patriot Act. I've read it. I've read it twice. It's 315 pages long. But in order to read it, you must have with you and in front of you the entire United States Criminal Code. Because the Patriot Act doesn't read like a novel or like a nation of sheep. The Patriot Act says... On page 362, change the semicolon to a comma. On page 467, change the word or to and. Change 15 to 10. So in order to read this, I'm just giving you hypotheticals here, you must insert the language from the Patriot Act into the many, many volumes of the United States Criminal Code before you can actually figure out what the Patriot Act says. The Patriot Act was posted on the House of Representatives intranet 
that's their internal internet that only members of Congress and their senior staff have access to. And the House members were told they had 15 minutes to vote on this dastardly assault on human liberty. Well, what did the Patriot Act do? Why am I so animated about it, whether there was debate or not? Nobody in the House read it. Two members of the Senate read it. One of them is dead. Congressman Paul Wellstone said he read it. He's dead. It's Congressman or Senator Russell, Senator Wellstone, Senator Russ Feingold has stated publicly that he read it. The two people that read it, of course, voted against it. Nobody else read it in its entirety. The Patriot Act allows the FBI, your FBI, those men and women sworn to protect the Constitution, to invade your home while you're at a basketball game on a Friday evening or a football game on a Saturday afternoon or church on a Sunday morning and make it look like it was a robbery. Well, well what is this? You call the local police and say, my house isn't broken into? The last people in the world you would suspect would do that would be your local FBI, but they can do it. And they can plant a listening device on your bedpost or under your kitchen table or in your shower or anywhere in your house that they want without taking anything. By the way, if they want, they could also take your checkbook because they may want financial information about you and, not, and you not knowing that you have it. And if they serve one of those self-written search warrants under the Patriot Act on your bank, let's continue with our hypothetical with Nick Gillespie. They now, after October 15, 2001, send a self-written search warrant. No judge is involved. Forget about the Fourth Amendment, the President has said. It takes too much time. Too much time to preserve human liberty. Too much time to remember these are natural rights, as natural as the fingers on the ends of our hands. But the Patriot Act says if the self-written search warrant is served on Gillespie's bank, it is a crime for the bank to tell him. Well, wait a minute. What about the First Amendment that says Congress shall make no law? What about the Fourth Amendment that says if you want evidence from someone, you've got to go to a judge? The Patriot Act wipes that out. Not only may the evidence be used, remember Carter and his buddies when they wrote FISA, when they wrote the Right to Financial Privacy Act in 77 and 78, says right in the statute, can't be used as evidence in a criminal case. The Patriot Act says whatever is obtained from one of these self-written search warrants must be used, as that's the first time I've seen that in any statute I've ever read, must be used and must be admitted as competent evidence in a criminal case. So the Patriot Act brings us full circle from the reasons for which, at least the last straw about which, we broke away from the mother country. The king and the parliament told the British soldiers they could write their own search warrants and use the fruits of those warrants against us in a criminal prosecution. And the Congress has told not just the FBI, but all federal agents, that they can write their own search warrants, serve them on a financial institution, use the evidence obtained against you, and make it a crime for the financial institution to tell you. It's even a crime for the custodian, the person at the financial institution, to tell anyone that he or she has received a self-written search warrant. So the banker can't tell her husband her lawyer, her significant other, a priest in the confessional booth, can't even tell a judge in a federal court. That's why these challenges, when there are challenges, are always John Doe or Mary Rowe versus John Can't even Ashcroft. tell a judge in a federal court. That's why these challenges, when there are challenges, are always John Doe or Mary Rowe versus John Ashcroft or Alberto Gonzalez. Because if you file a complaint with your real name on it, five years in a federal prison, and the evidence is right there, you broke the law. You revealed that an FBI agent knocked on your door and handed you a self-written search warrant. Even the Patriot Act, however, as abominable as it is, limited the targets of self-written search warrants to financial institutions. Now, two years later, on December 13, 2003, 
a day in which everyone in this room will remember where she or he was. The president signed an innocuous sounding, long, boring financial document into law, the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal 2004. Basically, this act provides uh, appropriations from the General Treasury for the 16 uh, intelligence agencies that we know about and the 2,000 intelligence agencies that we don't know about. I'm laughing. If we don't know about them, how would we know there's 2,000? We don't know what we don't know. Sounds a little Rumsfeldian, doesn't it? <laughs> tucked into, tucked into the Intelligence Authorization Act for 04 is a definition, a definition that would have made George Orwell proud. Remember FISA. Remember the Right to Financial Privacy Act. Remember even the Patriot Act. The target must always be a financial institution. So this abomination that the President signed into law on December 13, 2003 defines financial institution as follows. A bank, a trust company, a credit union. So far, okay. A delicatessen, a bodega, a restaurant, a hotel, a casino, a travel agency. Your lawyer's office, your doctor's office, your telephone company, your computer server, and that great financial institution to which we will all repose our fortunes, the post office. So think about how Orwellian this is. The first three statutes say your target can only be a financial institution. This statute redefines financial institution to mean just about everything under the sun except your home. So now if, a, if an FBI agent or a federal agent from any of the federal agencies shows up with a self-written search warrant, they can read your mail before you do. They can see your medical records from your doctor, your HMO, your hospital, your pharmacist. They can find out what you ate at a, at a restaurant, what you purchased at a, a supermarket, what you read uh, that came in your mail. All of this without you ever knowing anything about it, and all of this without a federal judge ever involved. Whatever became of the right to be left alone. Oh, on December 13, 2003, why did the president sign it on that day? Because he knew that something happened 10,000 miles away, which would so dominate and captivate the front pages that no one would notice this redefinition of the term financial institution until months, and he hoped years later. It was the day we captured Saddam Hussein. Who the heck is going to read a statute? when that's dominating the headlines. It was actually a, a clerk for some federal agency discovered this and thought it was a mistake and put it on the wire services January 29th, a month and a half later, and we all read it and realized the monstrosity. How did your uh, representatives in the Congress vote on this statute? You'll never know because it was a voice Assault the Constitution and don't even read what you're enacting. Change the natural meaning of human words and don't even record your vote on it, as if all of this isn't bad enough. In December of 2006, after they knew they had lost majorities in both houses of Congress, the Republicans and the President, with the complicity of some Democrats, enacted the Military Commissions Act of 2006. One would think that if one is tried for a crime and acquitted, found not guilty, one would be freed. The Military Commissions Act of 2006 gives the President of the United States power that even the great dictators of the 20th century never claimed to have and that is the right to continue incarceration even after acquittal. Good God, how low have we let the government sink? 
I have called this book a nation of sheep because we act like sheep when we let the government steal our freedoms regularly, consistently, systematically, and repeatedly without even uttering a cry in protest. Now, not everything is lost. I don't want to ruin your appetites. There's a nice dinner about to come. Who has saved us from some of this? Believe it or not, believe it or not, those people who rail against activist judges should stop the railing. When the president said he could lock someone up and declare them an enemy combatant and throw away the key, not bring that person before a judge, not charge that person with a crime, not let them talk to a lawyer, not prosecute them, not give themselves a chance to defend themselves, the Supreme Court, by a vote of eight to one, said, no, you can't do that in this country. When the president's advisors said, take those bad guys to Guantanamo Bay, it's Cuba, it's not the United States, the criminal laws don't apply, you can torture and maim and do whatever you want, the, the treaties don't apply, the Constitution doesn't apply, and best of all, Mr. President, those pesky federal judges will leave you alone because they don't have jurisdiction over Cuba. The Supreme Court rejected that argument by a vote of six to three. The Military Commissions Act of 06 also took a lesson from Abe Lincoln because, you see, if the government swoops you up and you end up in Guantanamo Bay where there's no jury and no independent judge and no right to look at all of the evidence against you, you have no right to habeas corpus. You cannot challenge the jailer and force the jailer to justify your confinement under the Constitution. A natural right that everyone in the Anglo-American world has had since 1215. Now, why has this happened? I suspect that it has happened because Americans are afraid. I think that FDR was one of the great socialists of all time, but during World War II, he preached hope and not fear. He preached that freedom would prevail. The administration that sits a couple of blocks from where we are now intimidates and scares and uses state secrets and secret evidence and shares it with members of Congress. And after they've looked at this stuff and God knows what it is, they come out and they vote to destroy the Constitution. Where is freedom? Freedom is in our hearts. If it dies there, forget it. No judge, no speech, no book, no cable TV. No legislature is going to bring it back. But if it lives in our hearts, no government can for very long keep it away. God love you.